Hello, boys and girls. Our lesson today is about rural living in Africa. Rural, remember, means living in the country. And since Africa is such a very large place, let's talk especially today about rural living in East Africa. Now, East Africa usually includes Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, which includes the island of Zanzibar. And most of this land is grassland or tropical rain forest life zone. Now, it's important to know the life zone because the people in rural Africa depend on the natural resources around them. They depend on the natural resources for their shelter, for their clothing, and for their food. They have very few imported or manufactured things. Now, we could divide the Africans in rural Africa into four different groups. The farmers, the herders, the hunters, and the fishermen. Of course, there are many Africans who do all of these things. They have a small shamba, they hunt, they fish, and maybe they have a small herd of animals. But most of the Africans in rural Africa are farmers, and they have a small farm which is called a shamba. On a shamba, the Africans usually raise just enough food to feed their own family. And on shambas, we usually find a variety of crops, such as bananas, beans, peas, corn, wheat, coffee, sweet potatoes, and cassavas. Most of the work is done by hand, since the farmers cannot afford to buy expensive farm machinery to work his small farm. Now, this long-bladed knife is called a panga, and it's the most useful tool that the African farmer has. He uses it to clear away the forest or the land, he uses it to harvest his crop, and he uses it for gathering firewood. On a shamba, we also find a few animals, perhaps a couple of chickens, a cow, a goat, and a pig. Most of the people living in the countryside make their houses of materials found nearby. These village houses are made of sun-baked mud bricks, and the roof is made of cocoa palm fronds. This farmer's house is made of bamboo with an adobe-like mud plastered on the side and a corrugated tin roof. And these people have two houses made of grass and one cut into the trunk of a huge boab tree. And what a wonderful house it was. This farmer's house was made of mud bricks covered with white paint and a corrugated tin roof. And this pretty little farmhouse was covered with beautiful morning glory flowers. And there were two shelters for animals used to protect them from the wild animals at night. And notice the jerry can sitting on the floor, on the uh, ground in front there. That was used to carry water from a nearby well. Most African farms do not have electricity or ru running water, but they usually do have a pump for pumping clean, fresh, cool water from the ground. Most of the cooking is done out of doors. Can you guess why? This lady was using a five gallon can as a stove, wood for fuel, and she was cooking a delicious stew. African women spend many hours preparing food for their families, and few of them have any modern conveniences. They use the natural resources around them. For example, here is a banana leaf being used to drain cups and pans, which were just washed. Although most Africans raise just enough, enough food needed to feed their family, some raise a cash crop. A cash crop is something that can be sold for cash or money, which can be used to buy other things. Now, these pineapples are a good example of a cash crop. This farmer had just bought a beautiful shortwave transistor radio as a with his money from his cash crop, and he was listening to a station in Cairo, Egypt. The year before, he had bought himself a bike. Most of the people in rural Africa shop at open-air markets in nearby villages. 
These women are buying, selling, or trading fresh fruits and vegetables. And this is how they buy and sell meat. A cow is killed first thing in the morning, skin clean, and hung in a shed. Then, there aren't any steaks, ground, round, or ribs. You just tell the butcher how much meat you want, and he cuts off a piece or two for you. At most village markets, you can also buy charcoal to be used as fuel for cooking. It's usually sold by the pailful. And then there are shops where you can buy clay pots, hammocks, brooms, and baskets. The women like to buy colorful pieces of material which they wrap around their waists. And here is some uh, material that I brought, bought in a village uh, marketplace in Africa. This material is actually called African prints, but really the material is made in Indonesia for the Africans, and it's very colorful. The women wear it either uh, sort of as a dress wrapped around them, or they wear it around their shoulders, or they wear it over their heads. African print material. Most of the people who live in the country walk long distances to and from the villages. The women often carry heavy loads on their heads, which is a good way to carry things because it helps one to have good pa posture. And you'll notice that most Africans have beautiful posture. They walk so tall and straight. And African mothers seldom leave their babies home. They take them with them wherever they go, and seldom do you hear an African baby cry. All the boys and girls like to go to market. This boy is helping his father take tomatoes to market in his wheelbarrow, and it's made of wood. Isn't that clever? Now, beside the many small shambas found in East Africa, there are many large plantations, usually owned by Europeans, East Indians, or Arabs. And many Africans living in the rural areas work on these plantations, and the plantations raise such things as coconuts or sugar cane. And coffee is another important crop grown in East Africa. Here we see some African workers carrying coffee beans, which will be dried in the warm sun and then shipped to many parts of the world. East Africa is the world's largest uh, leading producer of sisal. Sisal plants have long sword-like leaves with thorns. Once or twice a year, the workers harvest the sisal by cutting off some of the long leaves. They are then crushed, uh, put into a machine that crushes the leaf. And this is what comes out, this long fiber from the leaf of the sisal plant. And then it is twisted and made into a twine, and perhaps you have seen it like this, the type of twine that we use in paper drives, or maybe you've seen your school books wrapped with this twine made of sisal. Kapok trees also grow in East Africa. Their light wood is used for canoes and rafts, and the tree produces a gum used in medicines. Kapok trees sometimes look like trees covered with cotton balls because they have seed pods filled with a light, soft, cotton-like fiber called kapok. At first, the pods are green, but then when they ripen, they turn brown and they burst open. A kapok is water resistant and it's used in life preservers, upholstered furniture, and in mattresses. And its seeds have an oil used in making soap and it's also used for cattle feed. Another famous East African export is cloves. Cloves grow on a tropical tree. They're a spice made of a tiny flower bud. And they're picked and dried before the flower has a chance to open. Cloves are used in cooking. Perhaps you have seen some cloves in your mother's uh, kitchen. They look like tiny little nails. This is what they look like. Cloves. And this is what cinnamon looks like. Cinnamon also grows in East Africa. It's bark off of a tree. You've probably seen it when it's all ground up into a powder, but it comes right off the tree, just peels off like bark. And this is what a tree, cinnamon tree, looks like with some of the bark that has been cut away. 
Now, the farmers in East Africa have a problem that many farmers, a few farmers and anywhere else in the world have. They have a problem with wild animals. For example, there are herds of elephants roaming wild in East Africa. And sometimes a farmer will have his garden or his farm all planted nicely. And then a herd of elephants will come sometimes stampeding through his yard, through his garden, through his field, and completely des destroy his crop. I met a uh, park ranger whose job it was to scatter the um, elephants. He would get in his helicopter, and he invited me to go with him. And we would come down on the elephants and just enough to frighten them so that they would scatter a little bit and help to break up the herd so that they would not destroy the farmer's crops. Another problem is with the monkeys and baboons. They love to go into a field just when the crops are ripe. ripe. For example, they will pick off the ears of corn, put three or four underneath their arms, and go running off across the fields, having stolen the farmer's entire crop. Now, there's a group of... Um, people in East Africa call Maasai's. They also have trouble with animals because they have large herds of cattle, and the lions, leopards, and hyenas like to attack their animals. The Maasai believe that they are the divine owners of all the cattle in the world. They don't eat the meat. They don't kill their cattle, so their herds are very large. Their diet consists of a mixture made from blood and milk. They take the blood from the vein in the neck of the cattle, a pint or so at a time, and then they plug it up with a thorn, and it doesn't seem to hurt the cattle at all. The Maasai's wear long red blankets tied over one shoulder, and they carry a knife, and they braid their hair in tiny little braids, and they make their houses out of mud, manure, and straw. And since they're nomads, they migrate with their herds of cattle. Now, there are other groups of people in East Africa who raise cattle, and they sell them for meat and for their hides. This is a tannery in East Africa where the hides are made into leather. The hides are stretched on and dried on wooden pole frames. East Africa exports many hides. Many of the people in East Africa are hunters. They kill many animals for meat, such as the warthog, the antelope, and the gazelle. However, many of the animals are protected in parks and game reserves. Now, another group of people uh, in rural Africa are the fishermen who fish in the Indian Ocean, the lakes, and the streams. Some fish only to feed their families, while others fish to sell the fish in the local markets. Nile perch is one of the most popular fishes caught. Many of the fishermen make their own boats and decorate them with colorful designs. Some of the fishermen dive for shells and corals. They eat the meat of the shell. And some take people out sailing in their boats. Also, many of the people um, do hand carvings. And these are some carvings made by the people who live in the villages of East Africa. This is a little salad fork that I brought uh, back. Today, boys and girls, we talked just a little bit about people who live in rural Africa. I hope you enjoyed our lesson. And until next time, this is Ms. Matson saying goodbye for now.